Hey everyone, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch. It's been a little while, I know, but I have a good reason for why I have not been posting videos, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes. Um, today, <laughs> my door opened behind me. There we go. Okay, so today what we're gonna be doing is making soil blocks and this is a soil block maker. So we're going to be mixing up a specific mix to make these soil blocks. And before we do that though, I need to go and collect up everything that I need to be able to do this. So I need to go find my trays and make a table um, to go in my greenhouse, which is where I am now. It's absolutely glorious, it's so warm. It's not as warm outside because we have a north wind blowing, so it's actually quite cold, but in this greenhouse, it's really warm. It's about 25 degrees, woohoo! It's awesome. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is go collect everything up we'll need, and then I'll blab it to you a little bit about what's been going on and what we're gonna be doing to make these soil blocks. So here's an overview of all the different things that you're going to need to make these specific soil blocks. So this is some water and this is a 20 liter pail, but you only need 10 liters and I didn't have a 10 liter pail. So I'm going to be using half of that one. Um, some lime, preferably lawn and garden lime, some perlite, some compost down here and fertilizer. And this is the one that is um, recommended by the place that I got the recipe from some peat and then so your soil block makers and then something to mix it all in and I'm just using my standard wheelbarrow. So before I get into mixing this all up, I just wanted to fill you in on kind of what's been going on for the last couple of weeks and why my videos have been a little bit scanty. So I'm heading up to just about a full year on YouTube. It's gonna be a year at the end of April, which is just crazy. And when I first started doing YouTube, I, had, I committed to doing it for one year, um, just to give it, I guess, a, a fair shake, to see if it was something that I enjoyed doing um, kind of over the long term, whether it was something that would be financially rewarding, whether it would be something that was kind of what I had set out initially to um, that I was hoping it would be, and that's also partly to do with community, both community with subscribers and community with other content creators, and a whole bunch of different things. So I've been spending the last week really thinking about and kind of meditating on what um, YouTube sort of gives my life, what the sort of value that it adds to me and to my family. And it turns out that it is way, way, way more work than I anticipated doing. And anyone who's a content creator out there, you know, it's a huge amount of effort. There's the planning that needs to go into the videos, the actual equipment that you need to do the videos, um, the time it takes. So each video takes maybe about an hour to two hours, depending on the complexity of it to film. And then for me, when I was definitely, when I was first starting, it was like five to six hours of editing per video. Now I've kind of narrowed it down a little bit just because I've learned uh, some tricks to kind of make my filming a little cleaner so it doesn't need so much editing, but, and I've learned my software as well. Um, but it still takes a lot of time. And in order to sort of do um, well on YouTube, you need to be able to produce a fair amount of content. And that's probably been my biggest struggle just because my life is super busy. Just a sec, my door just opened again. <laughs> 
Okay, so like I was saying, um, because my life is super busy, I have struggled with being able to get out regular content, but I love doing YouTube. I love making videos for you guys. I love sharing my life with you. I love the community that's formed between myself and my subscribers. And then also something that was a bit unexpected was the community that sort of um, exists amongst the YouTubers, content creators themselves. And I've made some really genuine friendships throughout this last year, which was which was a little bit of an unexpected bonus for me. I, I mean, uh, a lot of you stay-at-home parents can probably relate to this, but at least for me as a stay-at-home mom, my life consists mostly of cooking and cleaning and raising children, which is all really meaningful work and it's something that I really enjoy doing some of the time. <laughs> Not all of the time, but a lot of the time. Um, and, uh, but it can sort of become a little bit monotonous and I was finding prior to doing YouTube that my brain was kind of slowing down, if that makes sense. I didn't feel as maybe, I don't know, inspired, motivated, um, like I was learning new things. Um, as much as I do now and that's probably the most value that I've gotten out of doing YouTube is just even learning how to create videos and how to edit videos and how to interact in the community and how the algorithms work and all this kind of stuff has kind of gotten my my creative juices flowing, I guess you could say. And and that is something that I definitely don't want to give up. It's something that I love. So Dan and I have been talking about how we can do YouTube a little bit more seriously, which is really exciting to me. So obviously that's re required talking amongst the family and other areas that I can sort of pull time away from because it takes time obviously to do this and Dan is more than willing to help support me and so are all my kids in doing this because they can see that it's something that I really love and they enjoy being part of it as well. So I'm really grateful to that that they're willing to support me to do something that I really love. So what does that mean for you guys? Basically that means more regular content. I am sort of I have a whole bunch of different ideas for how I can do this. In the next like four to eight weeks or so, I'm, I'm gonna be fine tuning my schedule and um, the structure of my videos and the variety of different kinds of videos. One of the things I'm working on is doing a cooking video once every week or two. Um, that's just kind of where I'm cooking my supper and showing you what we're making and how we're using the things off of our property and our food storage to make food for our family. So that's one thing that I'm gonna be doing. And because I'm just gonna be filming me making supper, it's not gonna be as complicated, <laughs> at least I hope it's not gonna be as complicated as doing some of my other videos, lots of animal videos still and all of that. But the, you'll probably notice me just kind of experimenting a little bit with um, my schedules of videos and how many videos I can realistically put out in a week without taking too much time away from the other things that are really important in my life. So that is super exciting to me. I'm excited to go into year two on YouTube with a little bit more intention and a little bit more understanding of how it works and the kinds of things that I uh, want to share with you guys and how I want to go about doing that. So yay, I'm excited about that. Um, the other thing I wanted to do before I quickly get into making the soil blocks is um, to thank all of my new subscribers. I have not done a big thank you since I think about 2000 and we're just about at 4,000 subscribers right now, which is just amazing. I'm so grateful that you all stick with me even though I've been so negligent with putting out regular content for you. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, I wouldn't be here doing this if it weren't for all of you. So so I, I can't thank you enough. And I will be for my one year anniversary, I'll be doing a subscriber giveaway and, um, and I hope that you'll like what I have in mind for that. So without further ado, let's get onto these soil blocks and I'll stop blabbing. <laughs> Whoa, holy cow, this is really, really, really heavy. Way heavier than it looks. Whoa. Okay, and of course I didn't bring a knife. Okay, so the first thing that we need is three buckets of, and make sure that you're using not the 20 gallon or 20 liter like I'm using, but a 10 liter, I'm just gonna use half of finely milled peat, and then half a cup of lime. And then mix this well. Okay, and then two buckets of perlite. Okay. 
Okay, so this stuff is super dusty and you don't wanna be breathing in a ton of the dust if you can avoid it. So I dumped this in, held my breath, and then ran outside until the air cleared. <coughs> So three cups of fertilizer. And then mix it again. And then two buckets worth of compost. I'm just gonna mention it again, um, but uh, it calls for a 10 liter bucket and I am using a 20 liter, so. Or if you do this, just make sure that you're using either the same as I and measuring it the same as I am, or um, making sure you have a 10 liter bucket. Okay, and then one bucket of topsoil, <clears throat> which you can buy, or um, garden soil, which I just took from my greenhouse. Okay, so now in order to actually create the soil blocks, we need to create like a mud. It doesn't give an exact amount of water to add, but so that it's like mud, that's the way they describe it. I, um, because I'm not gonna be using this all at once, I don't have time to make all the soil blocks I need right now, I'm just gonna mix a small amount and use one of my trays to uh, mix it in so that we can try this out. Testing this is just squeezing it and seeing if it holds together. So I think that's probably good. Make sure it's mixed really well. So let's try this. And apparently you want to make sure that where you're going to be pushing in to the soil is bigger than the soil block maker because you want it to compress. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Here we go. Okay, so it's in, it's stuck in, so now we'll try. Okay, here it goes. so awesome. Okay, so these little holes that are in here, created by this little spot here, is where you put the seed. And then, um, just for fun, I'm going to try out this bigger block, because apparently this one, uh, these little ones fit into the square in this one, and then you can use this one when the, seed, the roots start coming out of the side. So we'll give that one a try too. This is exciting! One of the things that I've read is that using an old bathtub, a big old bathtub would work really well for this. And I could see that because you'd have a little bit more surface space to work with. But since I'm just experimenting, this works. Okay, so one of the things that I learned just through trying this right away is that you really want to push down on the plunger and kind of allow that to compress it as you pull it up because the edges on this big one are a little bit loose, but I'm sure I'll get better with time.
Okay, so I just spent an hour out in my greenhouse with my hands in the dirt. So basically it can snow. It actually snowed two inches yesterday and we're supposed to get some more snow in the next couple of days, but it can snow all at once as long as I can be in my greenhouse. So really, really happy. Um, one of the sort of a couple of the tricks that I learned just through what, just through um, doing this just now is when you stick it into the dirt, rock it back and forth so that you can really get everything packed up in there. And then when you plunge it down, your temptation is going to be to kind of lift while you plunge. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, I found that if you keep it down and kind of force this down to really pack the blocks in and then just when you get to the end then just slowly lift up then it makes the blocks a little bit more firm so i'm really really happy with this super super fast um i think that we'll see how they hold together i'll let you guys know how it goes as i experiment with it but um it is pretty quick even with this so if you're only doing a small amount of starts definitely go with the smaller one like this um you could even go with just the single one i think if you were just doing a few um but for me I'm thinking that if I do love this as much as I think I might, I might get one of the bigger ones just to speed it up. But even still, this took no time at all to fill one tray with these little seed blocks. So yay, sounds good so far. I quickly wanted to say before I signed off that I am starting to post over on Instagram. I post a picture or two every day and I'm starting to figure out the whole story, Instagram story thing so that I can put little videos up every day to kind of keep you um, being able to know what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis on the farm since I can't post videos that frequently. So if you want to hop over to Instagram and follow along over there, I actually just did a little live video. It was like 30 seconds long um, because I happen to have enough cell service in this one little spot to do live videos and live videos are absolutely terrifying for me. They, I don't know why, I just completely blank out when I do them, but I'm gonna try to get better at them so that we can have some more interaction over there and hopefully be able to do some live videos here as well. We have very limited cell service on our property. There's one corner of the house that gets it, in my greenhouse apparently gets it, and a spot over by the barn gets it. So it's a little bit tricky for doing live stuff, but, um, and my internet is really slow, so I don't think I could pull it off. Um, in the house, but I'm going to try to work on that for you guys because I know that a lot of you really enjoy the live show thing. So I'll see. I'm not promising anything, but I'll try my best. So I hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you in a few days. Bye.